Forget the zombie apocalypse of fiction. The real one is already here. It's happening right now, under our feet, in a war that has raged for millions of years. This isn't a battle of claws or teeth. It's a battle for the mind. And the planet's most terrifying conqueror isn't a lion or a shark. It's a fungus. Welcome to the world of Ophiocordyceps, the fungal warlord. Its kingdom is the rainforest floor. Its subjects are ants. And its method of rule is not just murder, it is absolute parasitic possession. The war begins not with a bang, but with a whisper. A single microscopic spore, released from the corpse of a previous victim, lands on the exoskeleton of a foraging ant. It is a biological warhead. Immediately, the spore begins its assault. It secretes a cocktail of enzymes that burn through the ant's armor. It doesn't need a door. It melts a hole straight through the wall. Once inside, the invasion is relentless. But this invader is not a simple disease. It is an intelligence, a patient alien puppet master. It begins to multiply, not as a single mass, but as a vast interconnected network of individual fungal cells flowing through the ant's hemolymph, its blood. We call this network the mycelium. It is the fungus's external nervous system. And here is where the true horror begins. Most people assume the fungus attacks the brain, a simple infection, but the reality is so much more sinister. Scientists studying this takeover discovered something chilling. The brain is left almost entirely untouched. The fungus doesn't want to destroy the command center. It wants to isolate it. It leaves the ant's brain intact, a conscious prisoner, forced to watch its own body's betrayal. The fungal network grows, a living superhighway of control. It weaves itself around the ant's muscles, fusing with them, tapping directly into the nerve fibers. It is no longer an ant. It is a machine, and the fungus has just seized the controls. This is the kind of biology that feels like science fiction. If you appreciate these deep dives into the terrifying side of nature, take a moment to subscribe. We explore the unseen battles of our planet every week. The ant's own colony members, sensing something is wrong, will try to carry the infected one away. But it's too late. The fungus is already in command. It begins to issue orders. The ant, against its will, abandons its post. It stops communicating. It ignores its lifelong duties to the colony. It is now an exile, driven by a voice that is not its own. The fungus pilots the ant away from the safety of the nest, forcing it on a long, final, agonizing journey. It compels the ant to climb. This is the summit disease. The fungus knows exactly what it needs. It needs height. It needs a specific humidity, a specific temperature, a specific angle away from the sun. It uses the ant as a biological sensor, guiding it to the perfect execution spot. Usually, the underside of a leaf, exactly 25 centimeters above the forest floor. The ant arrives at this predetermined location. Its body is now failing. The fungal network has consumed it from the inside, replacing muscle tissue with its own. It is a living coffin. And now, the fungal warlord issues its final command. The fungus floods the muscles of the ant's mandibles with a chemical surge, forcing them to lock. The ant bites down on the central vein of the leaf. It is the death grip. It will never let go. Its jaw muscles are destroyed in the process, locking it permanently in place. And in that final, terrifying moment, the ant dies. Its brain, which watched the entire nightmare unfold, finally shuts down. But for the fungus, the victory has just begun. Now secured, high above the colony's trails, the warlord begins its gruesome coronation. It has no more use for the ant's body, except as a nutrient source and a platform. Slowly, a stalk begins to grow, a fruiting body. It pushes its way out of the only part of the ant the fungus never touched, the head. A bright orange, antler-like structure erupts from the ant's skull, a grotesque monument to its defeat. This stalk is the weapon that will start the war all over again. Over several days, it matures. Then, when the time is right, it releases its payload. A new cloud of microscopic spores, tens of thousands of them, raining down onto the forest floor below. Down, onto the unsuspecting trails of the next generation of ants. The cycle is complete. Why? Why does nature tolerate such brutal, precise savagery? Because this is not malice. 
It is not evil. It is the merciless, terrifying, and beautiful logic of evolution. The fungus, like every living thing, is driven by one command. Survive. Replicate. Conquer. It is a silent, rooted commitment to violence. A chilling reminder that in the grand theater of life, not all monsters have ants. Some are just waiting to be breathed in. The life cycle shows the and in this ancient ants, war, there is a final twist. As a stock, and the fungal forest. warlord itself has an enemy. Sometimes, another fungus will attack the cordyceps stalk a hyperparasite that castrates it, preventing it from ever releasing its spores. In this microscopic war for survival, there are no heroes. There are no villains. There is only the takeover and the taken. <coughs> this battle has raged for millions of years. But what do you think? Is this the most terrifying organism we've ever covered? Let us know your thoughts on this fungal warlord in the comments below.